behold your Son. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate the feast day of St. Pio of Petrocina. A gift from God. A gift from Our Lady for our generation. Our times. In the 20th century, when the world had been in great crisis, had grown cold, Our Lady asked her son to raise up a saint who would truly be a witness for the Catholic Church in our world. And with this gift, we have St. Pio of Petrocina. When we know the sower in the seed sprinkles the seed on the ground, some 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. Well, I like to think that Padre Pio is much more than 100-fold in his life and during, after his life, and even now, his merits and grace and goodness still continue to bear fruit to probably a million fold, who knows, maybe a billion fold, keep on going. Of course, the grace of God is infinite, and if God chooses to give his grace to one of his workers and reward those people who have devotion to him, so be it. During Padre Pio's life, he was a magnificent saint. People flocked to him from all over the world and loved him because he was genuine. He loved God with all his heart and soul and mind, gave himself to the Lord. For 50 years, he suffered the pains of the sacred stigmata, the wounds of Christ on his his body. He said when asked about standing with the wounds of Christ on his feet. When he was saying mass, he said, I'm not standing, I'm hanging, hanging on the cross. And his masses were two to three hours long because of the many petitions that he would bring to his mass. So Padre Pio, in a way, is an answer to the world of our times, the skeptical world, the world that doesn't believe, To the world that doesn't believe in God, Padre Pio showed in his life the supernatural aspects of our life. In many ways, we see through Padre Pio how the supernatural is even more real than the natural. What he did was a gift from God. He could, in the confessional, read read hearts, He performed many, many miracles, so many miracles, people would flock to him and beg his help. Eyes, eyesight was restored, limbs were cured, people with terminal illnesses were cured. Miracles beyond our comprehension. He had the gift of bilocation at times. He would be one place and another place restoring the health of a sinner either in a hospital bed or a sick bed or some other place, even by locating to administer to the sick, even hearing confessions. One of one person was, went to St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome, the Basilica of St. Peter's, and went to confession. There was no priest around, and then this bearded brown fly, flyer, friar went into the confessional and heard his confession. It was an amazing thing because there were no confessions being heard that day, but God sent Padre Pio to hear her confession. All kinds of stories like that. One of the most incredible stories is an American flyer in World War II was about to drop bombs on on San Giovanni. And Padre Pio appeared in the sky with his hand raised and to say, don't do that. And of course, the man was was shocked. He went back to his squadron leader. They thought he was crazy. Put him under psychiatric care. 
Later he met Padre Pio and he says, that's the man. Met Padre Pio in San Giovanni. He says, that's the man that I saw in the sky. So no wonders were beyond comprehension with Padre Pio because he gave himself to the Lord. He answers all those who say there is no God. God does not exist. And his purpose in life was especially to save souls because there would be many souls who would not believe and would go to hell. So Padre Pio spent hours in the confession, anywhere from 12 to 15 hours a day in the confessional. People lined up for weeks to get a number to go into the confessional. Many people who were skeptics, he didn't tell all their sins. Padre Pio would read their hearts and tell their sins. One time, two Masons went into the confessional to mock the confessional and blaspheme the sacrament. Padre Pio knew who they were, told them what they were doing, and told them to shape up or ship out, as it were. Those two converted to the faith. Countless conversions. Innumerable people who went to Padre Pio restoring the, the faith in the sacraments of, of God, the sacrament of confession. So Padre Pio was, it was a great gift for our world. He was also a great devotee of our Blessed Mother, saying many, many rosaries. Hard to believe, some say that he said almost a hundred rosaries every day, always constantly fingering his beads, which he called his weapon told one of the friars, get me my weapon. His weapon was the rosary, praying the rosary to Our Lady. He had great devotion to Our Lady and said, among other things, he said, all graces given by God pass through the Blessed Mother. He said, I should like a voice, to have a voice strong enough to invite sinners of the whole world to love Our Lady. He told his devotees, love the Madonna and pray the rosary, for the rosary is the weapon against the evils of the world today. He also said, some people are so foolish that they think they can go through life without the help of the Blessed Mother. And he called the Blessed Mother my my dear little Madonna. So today, my dear friends, we rejoice on this feast day of our beloved patron, patron of the Franciscan Friars of the Immaculate. Father Stefano Manelli, our founder, was a spiritual son of his. And Padre Pio is on record as saying that the Manelli family is my family. Padre Pio blessed Mama Licia, his mother, in the womb in 1932 when they visited Padre Pio. In fact, our Padre Pio was the means for converting his father, and I'm sure he had something to do with their marriage, bringing that beautiful couple together and bringing their 21 children into the world. Everything Padre Pio touched was blessed because he was a man of God. So we must imitate him, love the Madonna, love the rosary, love the mass, love confession, love the sacraments of the church, the Eucharist, of course. He spent hours before the blessed sacrament, whole nights in prayer, and so on. One last thing I forgot to mention, how he was so caught up in the supernatural, that he would tell his devotees to send their angels to him. And their angels would come and report to Padre Pio, and Padre Pio would send the angels back to them. He was also plagued many, many times, beaten up, physically assaulted by the devils, who were so angry with him for all the souls that he was saying, saving. So... Padre Pio is a man of our times, a man given to the 20th century to counteract all the unbelief 
of those foolish people who say there is no God. One religion is as good as another. You don't have to pray in church. You can pray at home. All that foolish nonsense that we hear from people. Padre Pio would tell them they were foolish. In fact, his devotees, when they wouldn't go to confession once a week, he would say, foolish child, don't you realize how important it is to go to church, confession? Once a week, foolish child, you lose many, many, many graces. So Padre Pio is certainly our beloved friend, our beloved patron, our beloved intercessor in heaven, and with his many Padre Pio prayer groups, his devotees are multiplying throughout this 21st century. And we need to listen to him. Who told us to go to the Madonna and pray the rosary, exactly what Our Lady said at Fatima. So let us rejoice today in our fellow Franciscan, one of our patrons of the Franciscan Friars of the Immaculate, and ask Padre Pio to help our world, which is in a terrible state of crisis with the unbelief. And let us imitate Padre Pio and become in fighters in the spiritual warfare for souls. Because as Our Lady said at Fatima, many souls are going to hell because no one prays and sacrifices for them. Let us imitate Padre Pio who did nothing else but pray and sacrifice for souls. May the Lord bless you.